Chapter 3, First Grade. Prince Charming and the princesses from the fairy tales are not the mates we have chosen. Though many of us spend exhausting amounts of time and energy trying to change our mate into our own vision of the perfect partner, to no avail. In first grade, we tend to have romanticized ideas of life and love formed by fantasy and fictional characters. We have a hard time accepting the reality of relationships and people and all of their complexities. What type of ridiculous arguments can you reflect on from your first year of marriage in attempts to change your partner? It's not a good thing to embrace fairy tales and fantasy. Nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith. 1 Timothy 1.4 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. Just like first grade students, we can place too much pressure on each other in the first year of getting to know each other as husband and wife. Many pressures result from tension and disappointment that you are not exactly who neither your mate nor you thought you would be. There is a healthy balance between accepting that we are all imperfect and life is about continual growth and change and knowing that a certain foundation of boundaries and life values will keep you from choosing a mate that will cause a life of utter chaos and hell. Common Core. The Common Core State Standards Initiative is an educational program in the United States that details what K-12 students supposedly should know at the end of each grade in the common subjects of English, language arts, and mathematics. After working close with teachers from various demographics and across different grade levels, I have witnessed Common Core regulation suck the lifeblood out of teachers challenging one's right to creativity and dampening the fire of teachers to lead their students according to their unique personalities and gifts, as well as their educational needs. This is a detriment for many students who leave the system feeling underachieved and inadequate based on a cookie cutter curriculum performance standard. Disclaimer, formal education for, for the percentage of people whose academia desire is in fields that require degrees of higher education such as doctors lawyers and judges it's all well and good but the large percentage that could be receiving affirmation of their genius in different areas are left feeling discouraged and completely at the helm of their report card when in actuality they could reach the stars with a little encouragement support and wisdom from a mentor mentorship program trade school or internship in marriage, however, there stands a curriculum superior to the opinions of any human being. And if we can adapt to the God who established the marriage covenant and the curriculum and standards he has set in place, we will create a better world, one marriage at a time. The Common Core Initiative claims to prepare students for life, but many of us know that the elemental teachings of academic subjects lend very little support to educating a person and preparing them for relationships, social skills, money and time management, the attributes of true success and happiness in life. Could you imagine if you were taught how to have wealthy relationships, how to relate to and lead others, how to prepare for bills, responsibility, raising children? These are the topics of the educational system built by the Lord. These are the standard lessons and topics of study created for us by our Creator. Common core values and subjects to achieve are given to us in the instructions and examples laid out before us by God. Just a piece of paper. We don't need a marriage license, it's just a piece of paper, right? Wrong. The defense that marriage certificate is just a piece of paper is no different than stating the Constitution of America or any governing legal document is just paper. It is paper, 
with a legal, honored, and deciding authority. It is paper enforcing rights, establishing boundaries of safety. It is paper that promotes decision and sets a path to prosperity. The words on the paper are what make it sovereign. Being indecisive creates delays in life. And being indecisive about enacting law in your marriage will result in a late graduation, being held back a grade or two. Who instituted marriage in the first place and why is it significant? If you stand for nothing, you will fail for and be succumbed by anything. So I choose to stand on the word of God. It has never failed me, never been wrong, and always led me to a higher level of achievement and fulfillment. If it is hard for you to process information from a person who stands on values that are different than your own, then this is where you may want to put the book down. This is where the road splits for those of us who believe in creation, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the father of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and those of us who believe all of life, earth, humanity, or the lack thereof, is all just a big bang of a coincidence. If your belief falls into the latter category, you may want to read from a different author on making your marriage remarkably awesome. You may be thinking, this is aggressive language from an author who is hoping readers will be able to relate to and grow from the message. I have learned from a lifetime of Christian processing and questioning of principles, values, and reasoning with scripture and the way that it is taught. The difference in believing in creation versus evolution determines what you will accept as truth for what can be changed in our lives, our minds, our IQ levels, and what we believe may be innate or even unchangeable or acceptable. Our sex life as married couples plays a great deal into the variables that determine our overall gratification or lack thereof regarding our marriage as a whole. So if someone believes in the evol evolutionary theory, it will be almost impossible to teach that sex being designed by God has its normal and acceptable facets as well as its abnormal and unacceptable facets that we may need to change, like having multiple sex partners, for example. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman her own husband. 1 Corinthians 7 2. Without having creation as the foundation, many things are considered permissible as a characteristic or behavior of human nature, which gives us permission to operate outside of God's guidelines for success in our relationships. A creationist has the foundation that sets the scene for an understanding that not everything deemed acceptable and normal to others, society, is deemed acceptable or normal by the creator. The institution of marriage was invented by the creator with a purpose and an arrangement to bring purposefulness and accurate arrangement of all things into our lives. Created by God of the kingdom of heaven, Yahweh. With purpose and for a purpose, we are most happy when functioning in the purpose we were created for. Am I suggesting your life is out of order and purpose if you're, not, if you're single? Not necessarily. But I have to agree with the suspicion that if a mature, well-balanced, caring, loving, selfless, stable adult is single, maybe there's a smokescreen obstructing the reality of what that student of life is really struggling with. In other words, receiving an A on your report card at this point in life is simply having another person love and care enough about you to want to be your mate for life and fight by your side no matter what. When we were younger, my husband would always make me laugh with a comment about beautiful single women or handsome, seemingly well put together men. I'd ask, why do you think she or he is single? He'd always respond, because they crazy. I'd laugh and sometimes I'd argue that not everyone has to be married to be happy. And then as life progressed, I learned that so many people were suffering from loneliness and depression, yet they just couldn't figure out how to change in order to be a viable mate. 
doing relationships over and over again, making the same mistakes with each one, yet expecting different results. Crazy. Speaking of crazy, junior high and high school can be rough and more difficult than necessary without good understanding and practice in the foundational principles of elementary school. Elementary school, otherwise known as the elements of education, the broken down basic understandings of subjects which allow us to comprehend middle, high school, and college subject matter, likened unto marriage without the elements or foundations of life concepts, the higher level understanding will be that much harder to grasp. And your ability to attain and retain valuable relationships will be that much more of a challenge. A good teacher will not just pass the student on to the next grade, sweeping challenges under the rug, avoiding the extra lessons, conversations, and attention needed to thoroughly prepare a student for the next grade level. Likewise, a loving and motivated spouse will not ignore or pass up an opportunity to teach and to recognize moments intended to be learning and communication opportunities. How many long nights do you plan on staying up late to have conversations that explore your relationship goals and challenges? A mature marriage is only attained through many, many mature student-teacher conferences. Mature meaning conversation without emotional input, but rather respectful and tactful conversation addressing concerns, improvements, and areas needing improvement. Acknowledge the progress your partner has made individually and the progress you have made together as inspiration to move forward. Motivate each other daily. Make an effort to acknowledge areas you can improve yourself and avoid spending more time complaining about the areas you want to see change in your partner. Marriage homework is your active application of the new concepts you will learn, putting things into practice. Study time is your reading of this and other books on de developing your marriage and life and spending time talking to your mentor couple as often as needed. Test time is when your spouse pushes the button that would otherwise cause you to react instead of respond in wisdom and maturity as a teacher and student of higher education. Reaction, an unplanned emotional reply to an event, action, verbal or nonverbal communication from another person. A comeback. Response, a planned and thought out strategic reply or answer to a situation, event, action, verbal or nonverbal communication. Comment from another person. A logical and unemotional answer that takes the resulting feelings and consequences of such response into consideration. Legal marriage, legal God. In recent years, we have stopped identifying with ourselves so much as Christians as the label continues to drift further away from the original people who carried this title and the convictions they held themselves to. We love the church, the body of Christ, and the history of bringing the knowledge of Christ as king and his oneness with the Father to those lost who are looking to be found. Jesus, the Messiah, and the Word of God have been open to us on a renewed level. We have truly been held accountable to researching origins and principles that determine the filter we view the scriptures through and the direction the scriptures lead us in. It is undeniable that the scriptures are the living, breathing, incarnate truth of our Savior. Peeling back the layers of tradition to reveal an uncorrupted message, unlike the many unfortunate misconceptions that have been formed by a religious institution over recent centuries, led us into accountability for what the Bible truly represents and the message, the love letter written to us by our King. This peeling back of man's ideas and traditions has shed light on the possibilities of how miraculous a marriage can be in all of its glory and splendor, reflecting the perfect example of what our relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, was always intended to be, without straying too far from the points of what it takes to grow into a mature marriage, allow me to share a microscopic tip of the proverbial iceberg that has lent its knowledge to the wisdom I'm flowing in and continue to mature into that has created a glorious marriage for me and my husband. The Bible is not a religious writing.
but rather a political and constitutional document that enlightens its people as to their rights, provisions, and government welfare system set in place by God's government, the kingdom of Yahweh, God. A title of king or messiah was never religious, but rather a political or governmental position never intended by the king to be a tool to control people, but a solution to anarchy, dysfunction, chaos, loss, and the pain caused by operating outside of God's institution for his people to self-govern themselves with his statutes, commandments, and principles. Kingship is a type of government, a monarchy. We could say the most supreme form of a government, being that it's the ideal given by God to communicate a political correspondence and authoritative writing to guide the principles and values of a people to ensure their productivity, health, success, and purposefulness on the earth. The idea is to be legal, not legalistic. The idea is to be fully functional, not dysfunctional and religious. When we identified ourselves no longer placing ourselves in the box of Christianity, but as citizens of the government of heaven, the original reasons for following Christ and his ways began to shed topical layers of assimilation into new cultures and expose to us the original intent of our king. The words that lay before us in the Bible, unadulterated by recent changes to principle and religious add-ons and omissions, have allowed us to see what the scriptures actually teach. It has been, to say the least, a life change that has brought clarity, liberty, and freedom beyond what we ever could have imagined for ourselves. If you'd like to learn more of what has opened the door to our renewed understanding and the promises made to us that many citizens are not taking full advantage of, I refer you to the book Torah, Law or Grace by Rabbi Ralph Messer. For a better understanding, to your government constitution called the Bible. Yahweh is a legal God, and to reap the benefits of his institution of marriage, one must be a partner in a legally documented marriage. First comes love, and then comes marriage, then comes the baby in the baby carriage. A life in order produces happiness and enthusiasm. That was part A. The first half of chapter three, first grade. What grade is your marriage in? Keep listening to find out. And remember, the mature marriage was once an immature, sloppy, hot mess. We all have to start somewhere. Love yourself so that you can love each other. I love you and I'll see you on the next one. Those are my clear-cut concepts. Leave your clear-cut comments.